So in my last video, you'll have seen me going through the process of installing this Dell H200i into my R710 server. And it was all going well. I even started the next part, which was going to be flashing it uh, into the LSI IT mode. However, I came across some few problems and it's actually taken me a few days now to um, try and work it out. So it's a combination of uh, my limited tech knowledge and trawling through various forums, uh, videos, and seeing what other people have done. Uh, I've got it working now, and I am currently now using, f well, not currently, but I am currently using uh, TrueNAS on it, and I've successfully set up in my home network. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the process of reflashing this card into IT mode. Um, now I've got it all worked out, and some of the other tricks and trials I had to go through to get it to work. So as I mentioned in my last video, this is the H200i, which is the integrated version. Um, I don't believe there's very much difference between the uh, the BIOSes and the firmwares on these, between the I, the E, the A, and the, I think there's a couple of others. Uh, it's just a designator that tells the firmware where it's going to be installed in the system. So there'll be a, a value somewhere deep in the BIOS or the firmware for this particular card that tells it it's going to go into the integrated PCI X8 slot in the Dell servers. This causes a problem because if you follow some of the guides to flashing this card into IT mode, um, notably the one I used was on a WordPress site by Tech Matters. Uh, there's a very good guide, I'd recommend that. However, they've uh, written it up in looking at it's not going to go into a Dell system and use the integrated slot. So I had to do a bit of uh, trawling around and find out how to get it to work. We'll show you that rather than just talk about it. So it also seems that Dell has now stopped you flashing these cards inside of their servers, and particularly in case of my uh, R710 and a lot of other people I've found online. Uh, they've also said that they can't flash these cards inside of the server. You will need a secondary system to do this in. Sounds straightforward, but that came with a problem as well. So initially when you plug it in, uh, this will come up with a no post, or I think it even stopped my system posting altogether as um, it didn't want to recognize the card inside of the PCI slot on the motherboard. So what I had to do was just grab a bit of electrical tape and cut it so when the camera focuses. So it only covers pin 5 and 6 on the top side of the card here. You only want it to cover these two pins, you don't want it to cover the two on the back. So as you can see there, the tape stops before it gets to those two other pins on the B side, I think it is. Unless this is the B side. Anyway, doing this um, is, is works. Uh, I don't know quite what it does, uh, someone out there could probably tell me, but uh, if you put this into your PCI slot now, this will um, boot up. So I'm just going to put it in now, and if you've got the integrated card like me, uh, you're going to want to take this black bracket off. Uh, it's just a T10 screw on the back side, and it'll, uh, it'll pop out. Unfortunately, I don't have the PCI bracket that goes on here. Uh, so I've laid my system down and I'm just going to let gravity hold it in the slot. So there we go. Now we can get our flash drives ready and start programming it. For flashing the card, I'm going to be using the Tech Matters guide on this for most of it. You can find this by just Googling the text on the screen here. So SAS HPH Closh Splashing Dell Perk H200. And you should find this WordPress site from Tech Matter. It's a very good and comprehensive guide. Uh, I did follow most of this the first time. But um, as I say, when I tried all this, I got it all flashed, but it didn't want to work in the integrated slot. Uh, if you're not running it in a Dell system, this doesn't matter. You or you can just run the card in one of the non-integrated PCI slots in the R710. Uh, but I wanted it to work as intended, so I followed most of this and some guide on a Reddit thread, um, which is very good. This is how to keep Crossflash Perk H200 in Dell storage slot. You will need a DOS bootable flash drive made. I used Rufus to create mine uh, using FreeDOS, and you will also need the as pointed out here in step three, the LSI-9211-8i.zip link. When you download this and extract it, it will 
have everything in there you need. It, I think it even has the uh, the free DOS software in there. So this is what the directory looks like, and everything's in here that we need. The only other thing we need to change here is the firmware file. I zoom in on that a bit. You can see that the firmware file here is for the H200A. Now this won't work for the system that we're trying to use it in. We need the H200I firmware file. So to get around this, we need to go to the Dell product support site. And we need to find the latest firmware for the Dell H200 integrated card. Uh, this is the A10 revision. Um, you can find it just by searching H200i in the search box. And you'll find, uh, for me, this is the third one down, Dell Perk H200 integrated. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll find the zip pack external, uh, which is an exe file, and this contains a self-extractor. Once you've downloaded that and extracted it, you should see a directory of files where you have the H200i firmware in it. So it's quite easy. All you need to do is just copy over that H200i firmware file in, onto your DOS bootable flash drive and along with all the other LSI programs and features which we just downloaded previously. So down the bottom there you can see H200i and all the other applications that we'll need for the flashing process. Now because I've got a UEFI capable motherboard there's a few extra steps I've got to take here otherwise if you're just running on legacy hardware you could do this all in DOS. Um, but UEFI doesn't support this whole process, so we're going to have to swap between legacy boot and UEFI boot a couple times. So, go back over to boot, enable UEFI, reboot. And in that package we copied over, there is a UEFI shell, so we can, uh, we can boot off that. Uh, you'll get to here and it will ask for a command so I'm just going to change to the root directory of the flash drive which is fs0 no. too much uh, stuff fs0, there we go so now we're in the fs0 and we can find out what our SAS address is because we'll need this later on in the process. Now I've already taken a picture of it on my phone when we were installing the card but we can do it again now. So we're going to go to sas 2 flashefi c 0 list and it'll open the SAS to flash utility from LSI. Uh, it'll take a little while to open up but when it does it will give us our SAS address so as you can see there yeah, um, it's recognised the controller uh, on port 0 it's, well sorry uh, PCI port 1 and we've got the SAS address there. So now we've got that we need to come out of the UEFI shell and go back into DOS so I'm going to reboot back into my our settings and change back to legacy boot. So now we're back in DOS. Um, we're going to run the clear firmware commands and the clear flash commands. So we're going to go mega rec dot exe space dash write sbr space zero space oops sbr m dot bin and that'll write an oops, and that'll write an empty bin file to the card and we've got success so the next one is to clean it completely so we're going to go mega rec dot exe again and then space flash clean flash zero uh, zero is the ID for the card, so uh, this may take a little while, so just gotta wait for that. And there we go, success. And 
Now we've completed all the parts we need to do in DOS, we're going to go back into the EFI shell. So we need to reboot and enable UEFI boot again. So now we're back in the shell. Um, I just saw as it quickly scrolled through the directory there, we have got the H200i firmware on there. Uh, and this is where we go to the Reddit thread that I mentioned earlier. Uh, about keeping the cross flashing for the integrated port. In the Tech Matters guide, it'll tell you now to use the SAS to flash utility to flash on the 6GBP SAS.FW firmware. We're not going to use that, we want to use the H200i firmware. So in this, now we're going to put SAS to flash dot EFI space zero space four, so that's overwrite and fourth, and then h200i.fw and that will force flash on the h200i firmware which is what we need to get this card to be recognized in the integrated slot in the Dell R710. So again the SAS to flash utility just takes a little while to wake up and we'll wait for it to do its thing. And there we go, it's finished. It does say here the uh, adapter reset failed, however when I tried this last time I had the exact same message and it, everything went okay. So the next one is force flashing the 2118p7 bin file onto the card. So we'll use the same utility to do that. So it's sas to flash dot EFI splash overwrite force to yep. 18p7 bin and even though we told it to force overwrite the firmware it's still going to ask us again uh, if we want to flash anyway so hit yes and it will start and there we go uh, we've got the adapter reset failed again, but I'm just going to ignore it. Next one will be flashing on the IT mode software. And we're going to do the same again. So, so SAS to flash underscore P19 dot EFI overwrite force 2118 IT dot bin. Oh, this time we have a successful reset of the adapter. And the last one is to flash on the SAS address of the card, and that's where we needed that either that photo or that copy of the SAS address that we saw earlier in the SAS to flash utility that we did right at the start. SAS to flash underscore P19 dot EFI overwrite. SAS address and then you write down that number and there we go we've uh, successfully programmed the SAS address and this should be now all that we need to do to get the card working in that integrated slot some people have gone on and put the um, the BIOS utility back in so when the system's first booting and it's going through all its post checks uh, you can get into uh, the RAID setup again uh, despite it being in IT mode. I'm not going to bother with that at the moment because I'm never going to use it. Um, this card is always going to be used with true NAS core so it's always going to be software based RAID. Um, so what we can do now is just refresh and let's see if we can see what we've got in here. So it's still recognizing it. Uh, we're using the ATEX card at the top there. If we see the vendor and the device ID, which is 1000 and 0072, and I believe that correlates to Dell and LSI. Another YouTube channel, The Artist Server, has done a good couple of videos on this particular Dell server and this particular Dell card, so um, it's worth checking him out as well. So we're going to power down the system now and take the card out, put the bracket back on and get it back into our Dell R710 where we can then get it working with TrueNAS. So I'll take that out now and you'll meet me down in the garage. So I've been down and I've put the RAID card back in and it's posted, it booted and we're now able to get into TrueNAS. 
Um, I installed TrueNAS on that uh, crucial 250 gigabyte hard drive, as I said in my previous video, and that's just plugged into the SATA A port on the on the motherboard and taking power from the DVD power supply. So as you can see here on the TrueNAS dashboard, um, everything's showing up as correct. I've already got my storage pool um, with the two two terabyte SAS drives in Mirror RAID, and. If we go over to the storage and disks option in TrueNAS, and I zoom in, uh, you can see that all five disks show up. So at the top, uh, A to zero is my SATA SSD, which I'm running TrueNAS on. I've got my two 300 gigabyte uh, SAS drives, and then I've got my two two terabyte SAS drives as well. So they've completely passed through to the operating system now which is what I want for running this now. I've confirmed this again as well uh, by going in and booting the system into a Windows 10 environment and all the drives are visible to Windows 10 as well so this will work if you want to um, add some hot sort of storage onto a Windows machine. And so now with all the drives completely uh, transparent to the operating system um, I'm going to put a Windows 10 install in a virtual machine in TrueNAS here and, and I'll use one of those 300 gigabyte hard drives as the V-Disc for it. So there we go, I hope that uh, shed some light on some uh, some problems that can come up when flashing the H200i. Um, this is what worked for me and I'm hoping that it's been a slightly interesting. Uh, I'm by no means a programmer, as I say, this is just all things I found on the internet. So thanks for watching.